Hello, I'm Jill, a Tingvid, and today we have a lesson on a, a particular type of comic poem, which is called a limerick. Okay, so this, these are some examples of limericks, and they're, they're a very popular form of poem. They're usually very simple. They're not like difficult poetry that's hard to understand. They usually tell a story, and it's usually quite funny. Um, sometimes it's a bit crazy, a kind of what you call nonsense poetry. It doesn't really make sense, but it's funny anyway. So, okay. So to begin with, the first example is um, it's a nursery rhyme, which is the kind of poem that children learn or uh, listen to as their ch and children in the nursery where they're, when people used to have big houses, they would have one room which was called the nursery and they put their children in there and they might have an, um, somebody to look after the children, like a nanny or a nurse. Uh, and as well as the mother and father, um, the children would have other people to help to look after them and bring them up and make food for them and so on. That's if they were rich. But also children of all sorts. I remember as a child hearing nursery rhymes and my mother especially telling me nursery rhymes. And the fun thing about them is that they they have a rhythm and, and a rhyme. So that there's a pattern which uh, children enjoy hearing the pattern of the, the rhythm and the rhyming of the ends of the lines. So here's a nursery rhyme, which you may have heard. Perhaps you have um, a version of it in your own language, if English isn't your first language. So um, some of the words don't really make sense because they're, they're more to do with the, imitating the sound of a clock ticking. So here we go. Hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one. The mouse ran down. Hickory dickory dock. So it's, it's a clock. There's a mouse. The mouse goes up the clock. The clock chimes one. Dong. And because of that, the mouse is frightened and runs down again. And then that's it. That's all that happens. But it's quite fun for children to hear that. So you can see that there's a pattern there. Dock and clock rhyme. And then we have dock again. So if we use um, a sort of letter form of rhyme scheme, you can label that A like that. That's rhyme A. And then one is doesn't rhyme, so that's B. One and uh, usually, <laughs> usually the third and fourth lines rhyme. These don't exactly rhyme, that, but they're a little bit similar. One and down. Um, that, that it's a sort of what is called a half rhyme. So it's a kind of you could call it B again, really, or B with a little one on it, just to show it's slightly different. But anyway, this is um, this sort of shows what the pattern is. A, A, B, B, A is the rhyme pattern for a limerick. And also, um, the first two lines and the, the, the fifth line are usually a bit longer than the lines three and four. So, Hickory dickory dock, the mouse ran up the clock. So that's like three strong beats. Hickory dickory dock, the mouse ran up the clock. But then we've got the clock struck one. So that's only two strong beats. The clock struck one, the mouse ran down. Hickory dickory dock. So it's... Um, that sort of rhythm, three, three, two, two, three. So that kind of pattern of rhythm and rhyme 
you find in most limericks. Okay. So um, I hope you, I mean, hickory dickory dock, that's just imitating the sound of the clock. So don't worry about what are those words, what do they mean? They don't really mean anything. Uh, but the mouse, little animal, ran up the clock. It's a clock up on a wall, so, or it's a, a clock, big tall clock that stands on the floor, so a mouse could run up it. Um, the clock struck one to strike. To strike is when the clock chimes. To strike, to chime, if it goes ding or bong, anything like that, one sound to show that it's one o'clock. It just makes a one single sound for one o'clock. The clock struck one usually strikes because it's, it's hitting something inside to make that sound. Um, the mouse ran down, hickory dickory dock, so that's, that's it. Okay, so that illustrates the pattern. Um, and then we have an example from the 19th century. Uh, you, if you've seen another lesson that, that I did called The Owl and the Pussycat, you might remember the name of the poet, Edward Lear, who wrote a lot of funny poetry. Uh, he wrote a lot of limericks and other funny sort of nonsense poetry, which is quite, quite uh, strange but entertaining. Uh, so this one also, you'll see it fits the pattern. And this is like about an old man with a big long beard. And in the 19th century, uh, in, in the UK, in Britain, a lot of men had long beards. It was the fashion in those days for men to have very long beards. Um, sometimes they would be shorter beards, but sometimes they would have a beard right down to here. So this is about one of those men. <laughs> so there was an old man with a beard who said, it is just as I feared. I'll explain that word in a minute. Two owls and a hen. These are birds. Owl and a hen. They're birds. Two owls and a hen. Four larks and a wren. Those are also birds. Lark, wren. Have all built their nests in my beard. Okay. So let me just explain the uh, maybe unfamiliar words. The old man has a beard. He said, it's just as I feared. Uh, he was worried that something might happen. Fear. To fear. Or to be... To be afraid of something. He had a fear that something would happen. He was afraid that something would happen. And you can see that it's nonsense, really, because who would be afraid that birds would um, start to live in, in somebody's beard? OK, anyway, two owls and a hen, four larks and a wren, have all built their nests in my beard. So... The, the nest, the bird's nest, is what they build when they lay eggs. So if, if the bird lays its eggs, it needs to have a nest, usually made of little twigs and leaves and things put together. And the birds often build the nest themselves. So they built their nests in my beard. So how many is that? Two owls and a hen. That's three birds. Four larks and a wren. That's another five birds. So that's eight. Eight birds have all built their nests in my beard. So he's got 
eight nests in his beard and maybe each nest contains at least three eggs. So shall we say an average of four eggs? I've, I've drawn five eggs here. If we say an average of four eggs per nest, um, four times eight, um, 32. So when those eggs, when the little baby birds come out of the eggs, can you imagine what it would be like? So when you start to think logically, what is going to happen next? It's not just, you know, some, it's not even just eight birds. It's eight nests and lots of eggs, maybe 32 eggs, which are going to come out. They're going to hatch. If the egg hatches, it breaks and the little baby bird comes out of it. So that would be uh, quite a um, something to watch. <laughs> OK, so you can see what a sort of nonsense poem it is. It's just not possible that that could happen. But it, it's funny. It's just funny. So that different kinds of birds would just build their nests in his beard. OK, so and if you haven't seen my other lesson with Edward Lear, the owl and the pussycat, he seemed to like to mention owls for some reason. Um, so have a look at the owl and the pussycat poem if you haven't already seen it. OK, and then finally, we have an example of um, a limerick which actually breaks one of the rules. Uh, the the rule of the the rhythm and the the idea of having three strong beats and two strong beats depending on which line it is uh, and those those beats um, this word scan is about that to scan it means it has to have the correct rhythm it can't sort of go wrong. It has to have a strong beat um, on a regular uh, on a regular basis. So if it doesn't scan, if a poem doesn't scan, it doesn't really sound right. It needs to have the right rhythm. Okay, so this limerick, it actually only breaks the rule in the last line. So it follows the rule for the first four lines. Um, it follows the rhyming rule and the rhythm rule, but it's just in the last line that it goes wrong. But it's quite funny the way it does that. So, there was a young man from Japan whose limericks never would scan. And when they asked why, they being just other people, when people asked why, he said, I do try. So up to here, it's all fine. But then we've got the last line here. But when I get to the last line, I try to fit in as many words as I possibly can. So... Even that does rhyme with scan and Japan, but you can see how it's far too long to fit the, the usual rule of the rhythm. Uh, but it's funny because it's the, the subject is that he couldn't scan. He couldn't get his limericks to scan because when I get to the last line, I try to fit in as many words as I possibly can. OK, so there are two examples of limericks which follow the rules and one example that shows how you can break the rules. Uh, you can have one that breaks the rhyming rule and you could have no rhyming at all at the ends. And that also will sound funny. It will make people laugh simply because it breaks that rule of, of rhyming. OK, so... 
I wonder if you might be interested in trying to write a limerick of your own um, and have a try and and if you succeed um, post it in the comments section of the Ingvid website ingvid.com comments we will also have a quiz on there so look out for that too okay and uh, we're looking forward to seeing all your limericks so have fun with it okay so thanks for watching and see you again soon bye